So it may look like we're organized here. We know what we're going to talk about uh, <laughs> because we do have a little conversation in advance. But uh, I'm going to name this the uh, uh, a title. This is the Bach Humbug uh, <laughs> a piece that we're going to do here because I they 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 were so excited about talking about Christmas stories because I about ten to twelve years ago was involved in doing a special event of a Christmas story, bringing back all the child stars from all over the West Coast. Uh, Darren McGavin, while he was still alive, he was in a wheelchair, but it was one of his last public appearances yep. before he passed. And we, at Bob, we had Bob Clark, uh, and I've done some interviews, in fact, that on Celebrating Act Two, there's an interview that's still very popular that is on the Celebrating Act Two uh, uh, YouTube channel, and that was terrific. And, and all the individual stars were were uh, really exciting, but I got involved as a producer of this of this show, and the story of the production of bringing all these people together was exciting. But John thinks that I did because I was just this little, little kid, and I, I thought you loved that. I thought that was your favorite Christmas movie. I don't think I ever saw the movie before <laughs> I helped produce the event. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, I've seen it a, a number of times, and I appreciate a lot of the things about it because I'm a Gene Shepherd fan. Yes. And it was inspired, Bob Clark was inspired by a story of Gene Shepherd. I don't want to go into that. But there are so many wonderful Christmas stories. Yep. One or two that I'm going to mention, I'm going to really get splattered by Fanny later on. But, uh, John, take it away. All right. So, Manny, you know that like the Christmas story, the, the Bob Clark movie, uh, there's a dozen or more movies that are played every year at Christmas. You know, they're the classics. My favorite happens to be Miracle on 34th Street. Mm -hmm. It's old, it's hairy. It's, I, I, you know, it's a little bit over the top, but I still love it. it makes me cry. I love it every, what are your favorites? Well, when you sit down to watch a Christmas movie, Miracle on 34th Street is more furry than Harry, but OK. <laughs> anyway, um, if I were spending Christmas Day watching six of my favorite Christmas movies, I'd like to watch them in this order. I think that it would make for a remarkable day after you've opened up your presents and, of course, uh, hung around the tree and. You know, had your eggnog and all the all all of that. I think I would start with these six movies. It would, it, each movie about two hours long or almost two hours long. So each one would begin. We would start probably at 10 a.m. We would probably conclude at 10 p.m. So this is a full day of movie watching. That is a day of movies. You and I would start with The Christmas Carol, the 1938 version, although the 1951 version is a better version. I happen to love that 1938 version. I loved uh, the character uh, Bob Cratchit, uh, played by um, by uh, Gene Lockhart, and of course his wife in the film, uh, and then their daughter. All the entire Lockhart family is actually in the movie, 1938 film, and of course it's the classic telling of of Scrooge. I mean, yes. and 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 for me, the person that steals the movie, Leo G. Carroll as Marley the Ghost. I think that's it's just a wonderful way to start a Christmas. After morning into afternoon, the second film that I would throw on, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you very much. Absolutely, <laughs> what a great way! To, what a great way to spend noon, the noon hour, doing a nooner with uh, with um, uh, uh, Maureen O'Hara and, and a young John, Natalie Wood. Yes, John Payne and a young Natalie Wood. But of course, Edmund Gwynn as Chris Kringle and winning an Oscar, by the but, way. And he deserved every hair mm. on his chin for that Oscar, yep. <laughs> the, the supporting cast, again, Gene Lockhart is now mm. the judge. He went he went from being Bob Cratchit to now being the judge in yes. the film. But it's got Jerome Cowan and, of course, a wonderful performance by Bill Frawley, William Frawley. I, I just, the character actors in this film are really, really good. After that, I would probably put on a more of a a, 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 um, a dramatic piece, although it is kind of a comedy, uh, oh, and and that is The Bishop's Wife. Oh, with, that's uh, cute. Yeah, it's a cute film. Yeah, it's a nice film. It's a nice yeah. way to spend a nice little mid-afternoon uh, day with Cary Grant and yep. David Niven and um, uh, um, uh, Loretta Young. Monty Woolley is in it and James Gleason in support. 
And uh, Carolyn Grimes, who also plays Zuzu in It's a Wonderful Life, she appears in this film as well. So that would be my third film that I would watch. The Bishop's Wife is just a really warm-hearted, yes. gentle comedy. Uh, all of the comedy actually comes from the frustrations that, that uh, David Niven endures through the film. And one more thing about this film. In the original casting, David was to play Carrie's part, and Carrie was to play, and Carrie suggested that they switch. Oh, that's mm. interesting. Yeah, so that's it's that's an interesting little moment. Now the fourth yeah. film, you start, you know, you now you're getting into the afternoon. It's four o'clock. You know, you get about to prepare for dinner. You got to be watching White Christmas with um, with Danny Kay and Ben. Of course. Christmas. Yeah, of course. you got to have White Christmas. But you're you talking you're talking about the one where uh, they go to the uh, aid of their former colonel or no? That's how they in. No, 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 that's why right. Art's got it right. Art's and they go up there and they do a benefit so that it helps him. That's right. uh, yeah, and, and it's, it's actually a general, and, and he's played by Dean Jagger. Of course, right. you got Rosemary Clooney and, and Vera Ellen, who's at the top of her game, and this was, I, I believe, her last film she ever made. Hmm. So, I mean, it's a, it's a great film. Uh, Mary Wicks is in it as well, and she's, and she's good. Um, again, this is one of those films where you wonder... Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye, where's Bob Hope? Well, Bob right. Hope was never considered in this film. As a matter of fact, this was a film that was supposed to be made between Bing Crosby and Fred Astaire. But Not Astaire really. bowed out because he thought he was too old. But they never thought about bringing Bob Hope into this. They brought in instead Danny Kaye. And I think that it works. Uh, Danny Kaye's fine. Sure. He, I he, think was, he was a favorite of mine. Yeah, he's a favorite of mine as well. So, I mean, I don't get me wrong, Bob Hope. I mean, it's Bob Hope. He's iconic. Yeah. But Danny Kay does just fine. Yep. Now we're getting into the later afternoon, and now this is the time to watch It's a Wonderful Life. That's number five, right? right? It's yeah, a Wonderful okay. Life has all of the elements of what Christmas is about, and it ends with this strong Christmas message. Of course, uh, Clarence played by Henry Travers, and you've got Ward Bond and Gloria Graham and yep. Beulah Bondi, all of Frank Capra's usual suspects, Frank Phelan. I mean, you got them all. You got them all. Thomas Mitchell, who's absolutely wonderful as Uncle Billy, and the one that steals the movie, obviously, for my money, Lionel Barrymore. Mm -hmm. And I can't forget Donna Reed. Donna Reed's in this movie, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got it all. If you don't watch It's a Wonderful Life, then what's the point of Christmas? Now, my sixth <laughs> film, now we're going into the eight o'clock hour. It's late into Christmas. You can start looking towards New Year's. So the film that best embodies the Christmas spirit into New Year's, The Apartment with what? Jack Lemmon and Fred McMurray. It starts at Christmas and what? it ends New Year's Eve. Absolutely. <laughs> wait, wow. wait, wait. Wait, and I it's thought I was going to get splattered. It's absolutely a Christmas movie. I thought movie I was going to get splattered. All the splattered. Christmas themes and everything. Oops. I it thought it was going to get started for, for Love Actually. No, Love Actually is actually bad. Let's talk about the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's a good That's film, but Love Actually is what Love Christmas is all bad. about. Okay, uh, so I like the apartment. Now, here's one more thing, and really out of the box. It is now 10 p.m. You sent the critters to bed, the kids, the, 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 the critters. Uh, you yeah, you watched the six. You, you've already put the six out there. Yeah, now I'm going to put a seventh one. This is like an uh, ask. You know, it's late at night. You still kind of have that feeling for Christmas, but you're really kind of moved on. Okay, that's, drum roll, drum that's roll. That's when you bring in Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Which is not finally Christmas something we can agree on. <laughs> what, do you think I was going to say Fitzwilly? Come on. No. Oh. Yippee, yippee, kaye, kayo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, yeah. You guys. Well, Forget Die Hard, I, but I will make a case for the apartment. It, it, it has all of the themes of spirit and goodwill. And, and you know, it, it, it gives you that ending that takes place on New Year's Eve as to what is the new year going to bring for Shirley MacLaine and Jack Lemmon. But she says shut up and deal when they're playing gin together. I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very snarky, well done movie that just happens to take place during the holidays. Well, I will have to say is that you think that everything that we've just said, okay, barely scratches the surface, okay? If you were truly, John, a Christmas movie devotee, you would have already been deep into watching uh, Hallmark Channel. They have their back-to-back 24-7 of Christmas stories. If you love Canada, 
if, if you like Canada, if you like subtitles that have C O L O U R, okay, yeah, okay, that's for you, John. <laughs> <laughs> well, Manny, I I have to tell you that you've got a great a great list of Christmas movies, except for the apartment. Uh, <laughs> And, yeah, and you got a great like list, but he's, like he's you, checking it twice. Yeah, you, you've you've taken me through the day. You've taken me from the, the morning to the evening, and I, I like that. And, and certainly, there are more than enough sure. great old favorite Christmas. You know, if one stories. of them en- if one of them ends a little bit early, and you got a half hour to spare in between, you could toss in Boris Karloff's, you know, how the Grinch stole Christmas from television. I mean, that would. Oh, work. okay, yeah. Or yeah. yeah, any one of the television specials. Sorry. I like the I leave, like the Jim Jim, Jim Carrey version. Let me leave you with one thought, and this is directed to Art, and this is about the Hallmark Channel. Uh, th- this, you know what this is right here, the, my little thing. This is when you don't care enough to send the very best. That, that's, oh, that's the Hallmark card. No. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hey, this is a family show. Thank you. Why did the little finger? It's the little finger. I, I, yeah. I little. You you know what I. I like the little things, the little thoughts that you have are yes. so big to me. <laughs> the Hallmark Channel. Well, you know what? Happy holidays to one and all. And, you know, all kidding aside, I hope that the new year brings you uh, great health, John, for sure. Thank you. Uh, thank great you. wealth for art. And um, I hope that uh, everything goes well and we get to do another 70 or 80 of these things. And I look, forward, I look forward to the next Forgotten Hollywood book. Which is uh, coming out what in, by next year? I keep saying that, don't I? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm, wor- I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> where's my Where's my beard? <laughs> you mind if I borrow your beard, John? Or or. Yeah. or- <laughs> For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.